this for the discussion. Get closer. I'm gonna hit play. This is actually uh, an examination of an ear. And we're going inside the ear canal like that. This is actually one of my patients. I grabbed this video. And of course they were here for earache. Hold on, we're, we're not quite in yet. It's going to get prettier. So we're inside the canal. You're seeing there you go. There's a period picture. Pause it right there. So there's where you see the tympanic membrane, the external ear canal. It's all red and inflamed, so it's probably an ear infection. And then you got this thing here. Any wild guess you want that is? Edsis. Edsis. Good thought. It's a chicken. <laughs> chicken brain. So that's a blister, a big blister in the tympanic membrane. Oh. The medical term for that is meningitis bullosa. And it could be single or multiple, and it's caused by the infection itself. Most doctors would say when you see that, then it's atypical bacteria because that's what's been ingrained to our brains. But it's actually not true. The incidence of bacterial versus viral otitis media in meningitis bullosa is the same. So most of it is viral, 70 to 80% of all rotatis media are, and some subset of them are bacterial. The treatment is exactly the same. If you think it's viral, you treat it with pain relief, and that's it, and wait. If you think it's bacterial, you give antibiotics. Eventually, that blister is so painful that it can be drained. Of course, something we wouldn't do here in the ER. You need a macroscope, and you need them to be really still, and then kind of drain it. If you do that, then you culture it and stuff like that. So um, if they happen to have, um, I infection like conjunctivitis with it, then you're more likely to be talking about Haemophilus influenza uh, rather than other bacteria. If you have a perforated membrane with it, then you think more about um, group A streptococcus because they tend to do that more likely, but otherwise it's most often viral. I just had the kid here present with earache and had not this picture, but very similar, had a big blister in the kind of membrane. So then you come up with fancy terms like that and local fancy doctor. <laughs> Um, of course, they took Oralgen out of the market, so you can't really use topical uh, anesthetics. But you could take just 2% lidocaine, drop it in there, as long as there's no memory preparation. That helps some, but obviously it's pain medicine, uh, talocodine or narcotics if it's an adult. And that's that. Mm -hmm.